the magical and medicinal properties of rosemary. Rosemary is one of the truly great all-rounders, both magically and medicinally. It's often used as a replacement ingredient when we run out of whatever the original recipe or spell calls for. It's kind of a shrub, kind of a herb, with a spicy kick, so it can be used to substitute for all kinds of spices, herbs and woods. It's also a very powerful herb, so a little does go an awfully long way, and like any herbal medicine, it's best used in moderation. Rosemary is one of the many herbs in the mint family, and its name, which at one time was also used as a female name, derives from the Latin rosmarinos, meaning dew of the sea. Magically, rosemary is considered a herb of the fire element, although some do associate it with the element of air. Rosemary produces clusters of gorgeous flowers in the spring, which can be blue, white or purple, and the bees and bugs go absolutely nuts for them. There's a rather lovely Christian story that says that once upon a time the rosemary had white flowers, but then as Mother Mary laid her blue cloak upon the bush one day when she was drying it, its flowers turned blue. Although originally native to the Mediterranean and Asia, it can be grown around much of the world, and it's so successful in some places it's considered an invasive weed. Pretty as it is in a little pot on your windowsill, rosemary really does hate being potted and it soon exhausts its soil, so it's best grown out in the garden. As it's drought resistant, pest resistant, hardy and sun loving, it really is also very easy to propagate from cuttings. It's very easy to grow and it makes a great addition to any garden. Folklore tells us to grow rosemary by the garden gate to protect the home from evil and opportunistic burglars and to bring peace to the whole family. There's an old saying that where rosemary thrives, the woman of the house rules. Used extensively in the cuisines of Turkey, Lebanon, Spain and Italy, rosemary is a wonderfully aromatic and flavourful herb and it's frequently added to barbecues, meat dishes, pasta dishes and vegetable dishes of all kinds. It isn't just great for savoury dishes either. You can add rosemary to biscuits and sweet treats too if you fancy. Personally, I'm a big fan of a nice rosemary and lemon oat biscuit. If you're using dried rosemary rather than fresh in your cooking, do add it earlier in the cooking pr procedure to give those oils a chance to come out into your food. It can also be brewed and drunk as a lovely punch or herbal tea that's both relaxing and invigorating at the same time. You can also add it to vinegars, oils, salts and even incenses. In aromatherapy, with its quite strong woody and camphorous scent, rosemary is used to treat muscle aches, coughs and colds, headaches, hypertension, rheumatism, poor circulation and fatigue amongst many other things. It's great to use after a long, tiring day to soothe your body and soul, and to rejuvenate and reinvig reinvigorate yourself. As a middle note oil, it blends very well with quite a lot of other oils, especially the woody, herby or spicy ones. As Ophelia says in Shakespeare's Hamlet, rosemary is from a remembrance, and rosemary has long been associated with memories and remembrance of our loved ones. The Egyptians used it in the embalming process and in funerary rites. Sprigs are often placed in the hands of the dead, and mourners throughout the centuries have thrown sprigs of rosemary into graves as the coffin is lowered as a mark of respect. In Australia, sprigs of rosemary are often worn on Anzac Day and Remembrance Day to honour those lost in war, as rosemary grows wild in abundance on the Gallipoli Peninsula. In ancient Greece and Rome, students wore wreaths of rosemary around their heads to aid their concentration and memory while studying, and the herb was sacred to Mosine, the Greek goddess of memory. If, like the ancient bards or druids of old, you're looking to learn spells or stories wrote, you can utilise rosemary to help you remember them. Modern scientific and medical studies have indeed found that rosemary does improve memory and cognitive function when it's either smelt or ingested, so there's something to the old law, and the oils within rosemary are being investigated for potential use in treating Alzheimer's and dementia. Rosemary's uses in folk medicine go back a long way. It was first mentioned in cuneiform writings from over 5,000 years ago, and people like me haven't shut up about it since. The Greeks and the ancient Egyptians used it both medically and for serving the dead. Rosemary was one of the herbs carried in medieval times to ward off the plague, and rosemary was used as recently as the early 20th century to fumigate sick rooms in France and England. It does have some amazing medicinal properties. It's got tonic, antibiotic, anti-inflammatory, antiseptic, antiviral, carminative, astringent and analgesic properties, plus it's rich in antioxidants, minerals and vitamins. 
Rosemary is a powerfully protective herb, warding off the evil eye and negative energies of all kinds. If you're looking for a more sustainable, eco-friendly and non-appropriative alternative to sage and saging, try using rosemary. And growing your own will not only save you lots of money, it'll help reduce your carbon footprint too as it'll be right on your doorstep rather than having to be flown around the globe. Sprigs hung above the bed are reputed to save the sleeper from nightmares or evil spirits who may try and hag ride you during the night, and to help you remember your sweeter dreams the next morning. In Spain, rosemary was said to keep away bandits and wicked witches, and so was often placed in people's hats or in people's shoes to protect people while travelling. Dried sprigs kept in the wardrobe not only scent your clothes, but keep away moths too. Popping some rosemary into any spell or herb sachet adds protection and a bit of oomph to your magic and helps keep both you and the spell on track. Today rosemary is very popular as a hair rinse and a shampoo ingredient, especially for those who've got darker hair. It conditions the hair and allegedly invigorates the scalp, encouraging hair to grow. As a cleansing herb, rosemary can be added to floor washes and it's great if you've got wooden floors, mouth washes, cleansing spells and shower gels. Rosemary in any form is a very powerful aura cleanser. Its sprigs can also be used as an aspergillum to sprinkle water or oils throughout your home or over your magical tools or even to cast your circle for magical or meditative work. Rosemary is a fairy plant, like lavender, and where it grows it attracts all kinds of good fairy energy. It's said that where it thrives, fairies play. It also rather handily keeps away the bad fairies. So sprigs were tied to cots and children's beds to stop the kiddies being stolen away or swapped out with changelings. Rosemary acts as a kind of portal or door to both fairyland and the realm of the dead, so it can be used if you're seeking to connect with the fae or with the spirits of your ancestors or indeed your own past lives. As an evergreen, it isn't just associated with death, but also with the idea of rebirth and immortality. It's often used, along with holly and ivy, in decorations for midwinter festivals for both pagans and Christians alike. It's a herb sacred to many goddesses, such as Frau Holle, the German fairy goddess of winter, spinning, children and domestic magic. It's also especially sacred to the Greek goddess of love, Aphrodite, who is often depicted with a sprig as associated with love, passion and marriage. Wedding crowns and bouquets in times past often included rosemary to enhance the love and the passion of the bride and groom, and to ensure they'd remember their vows and stay faithful to each other through the years. Smelling rosemary was often said to keep you young and beautiful. Perhaps that's partly why it's still found in quite a few modern perfumes. It's also one of the ingredients in the infamous Queen of Hungary water that allegedly helped a 14th century Hungarian queen retain the youthfulness of her 20s well into her 70s. Thanks for listening. See you in the next video.